Greeting everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to explain an Indian psychological drama movie named, Like Stars on Earth, released in the year 2007. Ishan is an imaginative 8-year-old who is well known among his peers as a troublemaker. He is the lowest ranking student in his class and fails every subject. He's in his second year of third grade, and his report card indicates that he'll have to repeat the same grade. Yohain, his older brother, is an excellent student in contrast to Ishan. He plays tennis in his spare time and will compete in the upcoming Interstate Tennis Championship. Ishan is frequently involved in fights with bullies in the neighborhood. One day, Ishan's mother complains to his father, Nanda Kishore, about his son's behavior. He'll have to apologize to the child and his mother in front of them. He pushes Ishan to the floor after they leave to discipline him. Nandaki Shoret is too harsh on Ishan, despite the fact that he loves his children. Ishan's low grades and inability to complete basic tasks, he believes, are due to his laziness. Ishan's English teacher asks him to read a line from the book the next day at school. He tries his hardest, but he can't seem to get a word out. He has trouble understanding the letters, but the teachers misinterpret this as a brat. He yells gibberish and is kicked out of class after she repeats the first time Ishan has been punished. He actually spends most of his time outside rather than studying because his teachers consider him to be a distraction to the other students. Ishan hadn't finished his math homework that day. He runs away from school and spends the entire day wandering around the neighborhood to avoid facing the math teacher. He makes the most of the day by buying ice cream, spending time by the sea, and observing passers-by. He returns to his school bus without anyone noticing his absence by the end of the day. We see him create a lovely painting at home. Ishan enjoys painting, and his imaginative mind aids in the creation of extravagant works. Maya, his mother, later attempts to tutor him and force him to complete his homework. She notices his sloppy handwriting and his inability to spell anything correctly. She equates his inability with laziness and, like everyone else, chastises him. Ishan will have to provide his teacher with an absence note from his parents the following day. He begs his brother to write the note for him because he is afraid of getting into trouble. Yohain writes the note after making him promise he will never skip school again. When the student shows it to his teacher, he is unconcerned about its authenticity. He also pretends to cough to give the impression that he is ill. The math teacher gives the students a test that day. The test paper is handed to Ishan, but the letters appear to be dancing to him. In the first question, he is asked to multiply 3 by 9. The kid imagines Earth, the third planet, and Pluto, the ninth planet, fighting each other in his head. He fantasizes about the Earth annihilating Pluto and calculates the answer to be 3. He submits the test after leaving the remaining questions blank. When questioned by his friends, he confidently claims that he thoroughly enjoyed the test. Nanduki Shorei returns from a business trip the next day. Ishan is ecstatic to see his father again and gives him a big hug. Nanduki Shore, on the other hand, discovers the fake absent note from the day before during breakfast. When he looks into it, he discovers that Ashan has run away from school and is wandering the streets alone. The parents meet with his teachers and the principal the next day, who both condemn his behavior in class. They also learn about the results of a recent math test. Ishan, the principal assumes, is a special child who needs to be sent to a special school for disabled children. Nanduki Shore is appalled by the prospect of his son becoming disabled. Both parents are concerned for their child's future and decide to enroll him in a boarding school. Ishan is adamantly opposed to the idea. He rebels and cries, pleading with them to keep him at home. And despite the fact that his parents do not want to be separated from him, they do what they believe is best for him. Ishan has a dream about losing his mother in a crowd that night and wakes up screaming. When she tries to calm him down, he promises that if they let him stay at home, he will study harder. Maya is heartbroken, but Nanduki Shore is adamant in his decision. Ishan is finally sent to a boarding school in the countryside. He'll have to share a dorm with other kids, and he'll only get to see his family once a month. It's a nightmare for the eight-year-old, who has never left his house before. The hostel warden greets him and warns him that his old habits will not be tolerated here. The family leaves with a heavy heart after touring the school. With teary eyes, Ishan simply watches their car drive away. Even after the car has vanished from his view, he remains in that position for several minutes. He walks inside the hostel as it begins to get dark, still crying. He doesn't speak to anyone and only eats a small portion of his dinner. When he can't sleep at night, he goes to the bathroom and quietly cries, missing his mother. In the meantime, Maya arrives at home and begins going through Ishan's belongings. She discovers a flipbook of him being taken away from his family, much to her dismay. 
As she reads the book, she realizes how much the child dreads being separated from them. Ishan struggles to tie his tie and tie his shoelaces in his hostel room. Mr. Tiwari, his Hindi teacher, makes him sit on the first bench with Rajan, the class topper, on his first day. Ishan's teachers quickly notice that he isn't normal. His art teacher physically punishes him for not paying attention in class. Nothing has changed since he was in high school. He is always sent outside of class as a punishment. And he is never allowed to participate in class activities because he ruins them. He eventually becomes so frustrated that he tears his books apart and throws them away. He gives up on trying to do better in school and falls into a depression and self-loathing spiral. After a month, his parents come to see him, and he locks himself in a room, crying for the first time since he last saw them. When pushed, he runs outside and runs several laps around the basketball court to show his displeasure. To give him a break from his life at the hostel, his family takes him to a hotel for the night. Johan presents him with a basket of painting supplies. But he has no idea that Ishan has shut down his creative side and stopped painting completely. The family says their goodbyes the next day and leaves him alone once more. Later that day, Ishan is at his lowest point in his life. He thinks about how it feels to jump from that height as he looks down from the school's terrace. Rajan, his only friend, interrupts his thoughts by informing him of their new art teacher. Ishan is unconcerned because no teacher has ever assisted him. The kids, on the other hand, are taken aback when the new teacher Ram appears in class dressed as a joker. In contrast to all other teachers, he sings a song, plays the flute, makes them dance, and lets them enjoy the class. While the old Ishan would have enjoyed it, the depressed Ishan refuses to take part in any of it. The student's first assignment is to draw or paint whatever they want. Ram wants them to show off their artistic abilities so he knows what he needs to work on next. Ishan does not even touch the paper as the other children begin to draw a variety of things that are all different from one another. Ram initially assumes that the kid is taking some time to think, but Ishan's paper remains blank even after the class has ended. Ram, concerned, inquires as to what is wrong, but receives no response. Maya calls Ishan later that evening, but he just holds the phone to his ears and doesn't say anything. He is informed that due to Johan's tennis competition, the next visit will have to be postponed by a week. This only confirms to Ashan that his family doesn't care about him. He wipes a single tear from his cheek and walks away silently. Ram notices Ashan kneeling outside the classroom the next day. He inquires about him after being intrigued by his behavior. Ashan, Rajan reveals, has trouble understanding letters no matter how hard he tries. Ram works in a school for disabled children and has a keen eye for children who are different. He goes through his old notebooks to learn more about Ashan and discovers a pattern of similar mistakes. He can't get the image of Ishan out of his head, even when he's teaching the special kids. He had the same problem as the kid when he was younger, so he understands. He realizes what Ishan's real problem is after a few weeks and travels to his hometown to meet his parents. They greet him warmly and allow him to inspect Ishan's room. Ram is taken aback when he learns that Ishan used to paint. This makes him even more sad because the kid has lost his sparkle as a result of the pressure he has been subjected to. Nandukishored dismisses his son, accusing him of being a slacker who despises studying. Ram retaliates by demonstrating the pattern of Ishan's errors. He frequently inverts the letters, as if he has trouble distinguishing them. Even so, the father associates it with laziness, but Ram states unequivocally that he is mistaken. He claims Ishan suffers from dyslexia, a neurological condition that causes him to struggle with certain patterns such as letters and words. He also has coordination issues, which makes it difficult for him to tie his shoes. The kid must have been in excruciating pain because no one realized he couldn't read and assumed he was simply lazy. Ram is accused of calling Nandukishore's son a retard, and Nandukishore lashes out at him. Ram asks him to read foreign letters written on a box to help him understand. Nandukishore finally understands what his child is going through when he is chastised for not understanding the letters. Despite this, he refuses to acknowledge that his son can make a living doing what he loves, painting. Ram is adamant about proving him wrong. When he returns to school the next day, he tells the students about all of the famous historical figures who struggled to learn as children. He uses scientists, actors, and philosophers as examples, which makes Ishan feel much better about himself. When Ram asks who invented the light bulb, Ishan answers Thomas Edison for the first time in weeks. Ram notices a glimmer of hope for the boy's education. Later that day, Ishan is near the pond when he constructs a working boat out of rubber bands and leaves. Ram is so taken with the structure that he takes it home and displays it as a decoration. 
Ishan's creative juices begin to flow again, but he still has a long way to go before learning to study like his peers. Ram goes to the school's principal one day and informs him of Ishan's problem. The principal suggests that they enroll him in a special school for children with special needs, but Ram is confident that Ishan will be able to learn alongside regular students. He suggests that the teachers recognize the child's problem and provide appropriate assistance. Ram offers to teach Ishan every day after school when the principal says it isn't possible. For the sake of the child, the principal permits it. Starting the next day, Ram employs a variety of novel techniques to assist Ishan in distinguishing between letters of the alphabet. Sandboxes, Play-Doh, and other sensory methods are used to teach them. Ishan learns to calculate with the help of audiobooks and the stairwell. He begins to understand the letters that other teachers have been unable to teach him for several years in only two months. Nanduki Shore comes to the school one day to talk to Ram and brag about how they're doing more research into their son's condition. He wants Ram to understand that he is not an absent father and that he is proud of who he is. Ram, on the other hand, holds the father responsible for the child's lack of self-confidence, which even Nanduki Shore admits. He notices Ishan trying to read from the notice board on his way out. He is overcome with emotion as he realizes he has unintentionally hurt his child and is unable to face him. Ram organizes a painting competition for both teachers and students at the school a few days later. Everyone congregates in the amphitheater and takes part. For the first time, Ishan uses the painting supplies that his brother gave him. The competition begins, and everyone begins to draw. Even the teachers are enthusiastic about the event and give it their all. Ishan creates a beautiful painting of himself sitting by the pond by the end of it. When he gets to the front to turn in the painting, he notices that Ram has done a portrait of him. At the sight, he is speechless. A short time later, it is announced that the winning painting will be featured on the cover of the new yearbook edition. The principal claims that making the decision was difficult because two paintings, Ram's and Ishan's, stood out the most. Finally, Ishan is declared the winner, with Ram taking second place. The audience erupts in applause. Ishan feels recognized for his talent for the first time in his life. He can't help but cry and rushes over to hug his teacher. Mia and Nanduki Shore arrive at the school for the end of your parent teacher meeting in the final scene. Ishan's talent is lauded by the principal, who displays his painting on the front of the school yearbook. The parents are taken aback by the sudden attention. Ram is also praised by the principal for doing an excellent job of teaching the student in the manner in which he required. Later, Ishan's parents meet with his teachers, who show them his report card and congratulate him on his unquestionable progress. Outside, the couple watches their son play and tears of joy well up in their eyes. Nanduki Shore expresses gratitude to Ram for assisting Ishan and apologizes for his actions. Finally, Ishan says his goodbyes to Ram and returns to his hometown for a vacation. That was all from the video.